In this screencast, I will show you how to monitor a folder on your server or workstation for file changes, such as file additions and deletions, file size changes, increases and decreases, and file checksum changes. I've created a test folder here on this machine here called in, in the C folder file monitoring. And we're going to uh, configure event entry now to monitor this folder and alert us and let us know when file changes occur. So we're going to open up the management console here. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a system health package that includes a file monitoring object. So if we look at the packages container here, we have four different types of packages Event Century includes, supports, and we're going to be looking at the system health packages here. If we expand it, we have a, a few packages here already. We're going to click the Add button here. And we're going to just, for the, uh, for the time being, call it File Monitoring Test. You'll notice that the package is light gray, and that's because the package is not yet assigned to any computers. We have two options in this case. We can either assign the package to a particular group or computer, or we can just make the package global and apply it to every computer in our configuration. So for the sake of simplicity here, I'm just going to make this uh, global, and you'll see how the icon changes here. We have got a little globe now attached to the icon, and the uh, the color of the global icon here changed as well. Next step is that we want to add an object to the system health package. We can either right click here, select add, and select the file monitoring option here, or we can use the ribbon and do the same, accomplish the same thing, which I've just done now. So now we have one object in here, file monitoring. So we have a few uh, generic options here, and then up here we have the ability to list one or more folders which we want to monitor. I'm going to use the Browse button, and we're going to um, navigate to the folder that I created, File Monitoring, click OK. And by default, we have the Include option set here, which means include all files in the selected folder except for exclusions below. So if we wanted to exclude certain files, for example, let's say we wanted to exclude any sort of temp file, then we could just simply add an exclusion here and this would exclude temp files from being monitored with this feature. Here we select which what we actually want to monitor in that folder. Here we have additions, deletions, I'm um, going to enable checksum changes as well, and file size increases and decreases, and also whether we want to detect alternate data, alternate data streams. Finally, we can def uh, define here on the, with which severity these file changes will be logged to the event log. Information warning error will leave warning here. And we can also add database logging here, which, which means that any sort of file change is going to be reported in the, in the web reporting and visible there as well. So we're going to monitor a folder in real time. And in addition to that, we'll set it up to monitor the folder uh, recurring every five minutes in case the real-time notification from the operating system isn't sent to event sentry. Now, you should be careful with the uh, recurring option not to make it too short, especially if you're monitoring folders that have a lot of files. So if you're monitoring a folder, say, that has uh, 10, 20, 50,000 files, uh, then a recurring scan can take a few minutes. So you want to make sure that uh, this interval is large enough. Here we have some advanced options here. We can ignore uh, file checksum generation for files that are of a certain size. Obviously, do not stress the CPU. If you have a lot of large files in a folder that you don't want to monitor the checksum of, um, if you are monitoring directories um, on a 64-bit system, you can turn off the file, the folder redirection for built-in directories like System32. Um, we can uh, we have another optimization option here to only verify the checksum when the last write time changed, and finally um, we only we have another option to only verify the checksum when the file size has changed. And that is all we need to do to set this feature up. We can see now that we have one directory monitored. Uh, we've got database logging enabled, and we're just going to hit the save button to save the configuration. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, event log here. I'm going to collapse this here and enter the application event log. As always, whenever we save the configuration, we want to wait uh, for a specific event to be written to the event log, and that event 
is actually shown here. It's the 1035 event logged by event century. So this event confirms that the agent has picked up the new configuration. It usually takes between uh, 30 seconds and a couple of minutes depending on uh, the system. So the event is here, so we're ready. And if you look at the 1035 event, it actually shows us all the packages that are assigned to this computer. So we can always verify that our configuration is correct and that it's actually assigned. And we can see here that the file monitoring test package is indeed assigned. So we are ready to move on with our tests and see how this works. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to fire up Notepad. I'm going to create a test file here and I'm going to save it in our test folder. I'm going to call it test1.txt. Close this again. The file is here. Event Sentry should now have an event here in the event log that notifies us of these changes. And it looks like we have a few more. So we have a first event here that says that the file has been added to a monitor directory, test1.txt. It's 11 bytes, 11 bytes big. We have another message here that the file has been deleted and another message to the file has been added. So these are some of the intricacies. Uh, so these are some of the peculiarities of a notepad, uh, which apparently deleted the file as we changed it and then re-added it to the folder. But obviously it's working. Uh, if you refresh it, no more changes. And we can see the same information also in the web reports. So if we go to history, file checksum, we're going to see those same three, uh, or actually um, four events. Actually, we have a few more here uh, from something else, but we're going to narrow it down to the file monitoring directory, switch to the detailed view, and we'll see exactly what we saw before in the event log. I'm going to make these columns here a little smaller. Here we have the hashes, but we can see a file added, a file deleted, and then again the file was added. So now I'm going to change the file. I'm going to open the file up again in Notepad. Test file changed. And the file is changed. So let's go back to the web reports and refresh. We can see here that the file was changed. And one thing that we are missing here is the actual change. So if you click on columns. We're going to add the action column here and then we'll see the actual uh, change that was reported. So we have here nine bytes were added and we can see also that a checksum change occurred of course since the file was uh, uh, changed. And you can see how quickly this happens. So Event Sentry monitors these folders in real time. So as soon as a change occurs the, f uh, the event will be generated and picked up by Event Sentry. Let's try something else here. Let's put the back the file back to how it was before. And refresh the web reports again. And you can see here that the size decreased. And that we have a new checksum here. The checksum here is a little bit different because we still have that new an extra new line character probably in there, which is why it doesn't match the original checksum, which uh, started with uh, D2479 and so forth. Um, and we can confirm that here we only reduced the size by 7 bytes. So if we uh, were to go in here now, remove this new line character, save it again, and refresh, we, we're arriving now at the same uh, checksum that we had originally, which was D24 and so forth. So that works pretty well, file additions, uh, file deletions. So now we can copy this file test one copy and take a look what we see now. And of course, here we are. We have a file added. Same checksum, of course, since it's the identical file. A new file size of 11 bytes and file was added. So that works pretty well. And of course, if we delete that file again, we'll have that change reported here as well. 
and the file has been deleted. And that's really how easy it is to set up file monitoring with Event Sentry. One thing I haven't shown you now is a simple checksum chain, so we'll do that too. So we're going to just replace this S with an uppercase S and save the file. And we'll have, maybe it's a little bit too fast here, uh, and he will have a checksum change now. So the file size remained the same, so we don't see any other events uh, related to a size decreased or increased because the file did not change. But we did delete, we did change that one character, which resulted in a completely new checksum. So that's all there is to it. You can see here that we have, you can view the history of file changes, but you can, but you can also see a status of the current files which you are monitoring. So here you can see that we have a, a bunch of different computers. If you're restricted to this test computer we're working on here, um, we also have, and we may have to scroll here through to see our test folder here, which is not visible, but that's good because that means we can manually specify it here by selecting it here. And if we view details, then what we can see here is we can see the current status of all the files which we have in that folder. And again, if I add a file here, let's say we rename it. So the first the first result should be that we see this file in the list now. So now we have the status. So we know we have two files in a monitored folder here. And of course, if I rename the file. This would also be picked up by Event Century. So we have a test one and a test two, and it's been updated. Of course, uh, that sort of change in the history report would be reflected as deletion and an addition uh, of the file. But that's all there is to it. Uh, you create a system health package, you assign the package, you configure the options inside the package. You save the configuration or push the configuration out to remote computers, and uh, you are pretty much all set. Uh, by default, Event Sentry will forward email alerts of all of those types of events, um, but you can always customize that and uh, create your own uh, filter rules in the email notification or any other package. And we have other screencasts that show you how to set up uh, email notifications. Thank you for watching.